graduated high school with good grades, like society told me to. I went off to a four-year college and attained a bachelor's degree, like society told me to. I've contributed to my community through youth work, like society tells us we should do. And all that doesn't matter on a street encounter with a police officer, because they don't know who you are, right? They don't know that I was a good student, that I went to college, got a degree. So when folks tell us, do good, no one will bother you, I did good, you know what I'm saying? I, I did what I was supposed to do, and I still get stopped regularly. Stopwatch is a group in the UK. We're a coalition of different organisations and we work on stop and search and mainly on disproportionality in stop and search. To give you some context, youth unemployment in the UK at the moment is just above 20%. That's 1.2 million young unemployed people. Stopwatch is important because at the moment in um, Britain and across the world I think what's going on is that young people are in a predicament where they're being over-policed, but in times under-protected. That person that's doing a stop and search on you, day in and day out, is saying, you look like a criminal, I think you're a criminal. For me, growing up, uh, where I grew up, there, was, you know, there wasn't that many black people. Mm -hmm. So for me, I got stop and search quite a lot, being the person that stood out, yeah. being the, you know, the black person. The profile. In um, the UK, I'm sure you've heard, uh, that people are seven times more likely to get stopped and searched by the police. So ISCRI kind of rallied for the local community to do their own research. It's really detrimental, but I think black people are seen as suspects. Yeah. We're not seen as members of the public, you know? And it's like instantly they approach you with that energy. It's not, you need to change, change the beginning. Mm -hmm. Of all, and then we could change the ending, really. The problem of policing in New York City is systemic. And the reason that these interpersonal um, dilemmas occur between officers and community members is because of the, the increasing amount of pressure felt by each officer to meet their numbers. And if that pressure wasn't there, things might be a whole lot different. So that's one of the things we're fighting for, to relieve them of those pressures. The young people now see themselves as victims and believe that the police aren't actually there to protect them. So if you can't trust the system which was actually put in place to protect you, then who can they trust? When people come to my office and say, you know, is there, is there something wrong with me? Is it like, is there something wrong with being Latino? Is there something wrong with being black? Because we're the only people they stop. And I see and I understand the divide happening between community and, and police. And I truly believe that if we continue to pull apart from one another, there's going to be no fixing it. We were talking about this yesterday. We've had people who died in their families who find it very difficult to accept that we're talking with police. Our police is perceived to serve the state, not necessarily the citizens. So we're really looking forward to improve police youth relationship. It's often perceived that youth don't want police in their neighborhoods. It's not true. Um, most of the time when we have People speak out, they say, we do want police, we just don't want that police. Okay, okay, we're going to do it this way. Who's convinced that the SMS thing... What we did to involve youth was to use SMS because they have free SMSs. We've used Facebook, we have a group that has 2,800 people on it. We used rappers. We know that in other countries they've been able to set up youth police workshops youth police plays with using theater. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eleven, twelve, 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 twelve. I try to bring the the two groups together. The young people have the question to learn to know the police. The police likes to learn the young people, but they were not really on a, on a friendly basis together. So uh, we have to bring them together. And that's my job. Can we please make two circles? Let's say from here? Yeah. Until there, make okay. one. Okay, in both circles there is a ball. You have to keep the ball in the okay. air. And it's a bit of a competition. You have to count how many times you can keep it in the air. The first uh, meeting we had, a lot of uh, youngsters came inside and they thought, we are not uh, little children. What are you doing now? With these funny, stupid little uh, these games. And I totally can understand them. They wanted directly a confrontation. That's what they wanted. So you need warming ups. You need really to do warming ups. Silly games where everybody has fun with each other. Because if you have been laughing with each other, later on you can have a discussion. Humor is such a big instrument. Let's try this one. Which place would you want to live if you could pick any place on earth? Jamaica. Why? Jamaica. Jamaica. And this is really worthwhile because they started to trust each other and they open themselves for each other.
when people ask difficult questions, when organisations ask difficult questions like the Equalities and Human Rights Commission have, we can respond in two ways to that. We can be defensive and fight our corner or we can be open-minded and say, well, maybe there's something in those questions that we need to look at. In our police force, we have a lot of negative contacts with uh, the Moroccan youth and we uh, experience that we got more prejudiced uh, in our work against the youngsters. We try to make a new connection uh, with the youth. The very special thing in this uh, project is that we meet each other like citizens of Gouda. The final goal is uh, to get more respect, uh, more understanding about each other's position, about the position of the youth in uh, Gouda and the position of the police. I get stopped and frisked twice a month by the same officer. I know him by, I know him by name. When, whenever he's not stopping and frisking me, he's buying me donuts. I've met his eight-year-old son. I've eaten dinner with his family. I really can't always get mad because I know that some of these officers, they just want to make ends meet. So it's really, really hard to be on the end where I can say I hate cops, but, I, but it's also hard to be on the end saying I understand cops. I've been stopped lots of times by the police, yeah. Um, probably in my life about 30 times, and some of those have been okay experiences. The officers have been nice about it and whatever, and some of them have been really bad. Not all um, ethnic minorities are not a homogenous group, but all black people are not a homogenous group, and I made the point that neither are police officers, and you know we're all people, and when you break down those barriers, making young people see police officers as human beings and police officers seeing young people as human beings as equals in the grand scheme of things is, is really beneficial for everybody. I live in an area of Gouda. This, the last time it's very trouble there with the police and the youth. And um, yes, I, I died by, by myself. Uh, I, knew, I, I need to, to do something. And, and then I heard, I heard of the project, then I see yes. We can uh, talk with the police over the problems. And they understand us. Yes. And, and we understand them. Yeah. Come on everybody, genoeg van het leven en dance. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Yes